Well, God bless you, and welcome to Pastor on Call. Um, Pastor Mike, it's a pleasure, pleasure to be here before you uh, teaching you something which is probably one of the top five questions that is asked of me all the time. In fact, this was a question that I myself used to ask in my earlier years as a believer. I just couldn't figure it out. I couldn't understand it until, you know, some time had passed. And um, so I want to share this with you. Why do bad things happen to Christians? Why do bad things happen to good people? Let me, let me first read uh, from uh, Matthew 5.45. Jesus said that you may be children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. So the rain falls on the good, and the rain falls on the bad. So listen, when terrible things happen today in our world, and we're seeing it more than ever before, especially with terrorism, innocent children, men and women being blown up while they're sitting in movie theaters. It's just, it's terrible. But, but the question comes up all the time, uh, where was God? Where, where was God in all of this? And for some people, this question plagues them. People always seem to question how a good and loving God, right, could allow such Terrible things happen to such innocent people. And, you know, this exact same question was presented to Christ Jesus. And it's interesting, when I used to ask that question as a young believer, nobody shared this with me. I mean, nobody showed this to me in Scripture until I was, I was, I was preparing a eulogy for a friend that died tragically. And the Holy Spirit showed me what I'm about to teach you. When this question was raised, um, and Jesus was asked this question in the book of Luke, actually it's Luke chapter 13, we hear in Luke 13 of an episode that is, that is only written in the book of Luke. Now listen to this. Sound familiar? The Lord was informed that Pilate had butchered some Jews from Galilee while they were worshiping in the temple. In other words, the disciples told Jesus, did you hear about the group of people that while they were in church or synagogue, that they were massacred? So let's, let's read the account from scriptures. It's, it's rather uh, telling. So in Luke 13, verse one through five, it says in verse one, there were present at that season, some that told him, Jesus, of the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Another way to translate that is some who were present reported to Jesus that the cruel ruler Pontius Pilate had brutally killed and tortured Galileans while they were worshiping in the temple. And this is a gruesome story. Pretty much the gruesome stories we're hearing almost every week on the news, right? Children being massacred in schools. Innocent children. Why? So let's put that into perspective. In fact, Jesus is actually asked the same question that we're asking every day right now. And listen to his answer in verse 2. And Jesus answered and said unto them, now remember, he didn't go, oh, that's terrible. Oh, that's awful. Oh, jeez. No, he didn't do any of that. Jesus answered them and said this, suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all Galileans because they suffered so, such things? In other words, the Lord is asking a question. They asked him a question. He's asking them a question. He says, do you think it's because they were the worst of sinners that they suffered so much? And, and, and so th these people were worshiping. And, and so he, 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 he asked this question. Do you think that they were worse sinners? So there's a, uh, there's a, uh, there's a, a theology out there called the, the theology of retribution. Retribution, meaning that um, we say this all the time, what goes around comes around. You got what you deserve, you know, and, and 
and, and people have this mind thought, this mentality of this sort of theology. In other words, listen to this, the, 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 the theology of retribution or the religion of retribution assumes that a victim must have done something terrible to God or to mankind to have allowed something so tragic to happen to them. My, my mother, uh, a few months ago, was hit and killed by an automobile. And people actually had the audacity, or the ignorance, I would say, to ask me, I wonder what she did. I wonder what she did that, that God would allow such a tragic thing to happen to her. It's called the doctrine of retribution. What goes around comes around. And I'm going to tell you something, it's nothing but junk. So after this question is asked of Jesus about these Galileans that are massacred while worshiping, he doesn't cry. He doesn't make them even, doesn't even give the impression that he even feels sorry for them. There's no emotion attached to the question. Look what he says in verse 3. He says, I tell you this, but except you repent, you shall likewise perish. Now look at this. Watch how he diverts the focus from the matter. He says the urgent matter is not why. The urgent matter is not why they died so tragically. The urgent matter is the soul that died. Christ did something incredible here that I've learned to do myself when this question is asked of me. Christ Jesus actually points away from the why to the bigger purpose. He points away from the why to the bigger purpose, the souls, eternity. So why do good people suffer? Most people assume that people should suffer in proportion to their degree of sinfulness, called the law of retribution. So then Jesus chooses to bring up another incident. Listen to this in verse 4. He said, Did you hear about the 18 upon whom the tower of Siloam fell and slew them? He says, Do you think that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem? And do you want to know why he asked that question? He asked that question because Christ Jesus knows how the common man views tragedy. Accidents happen. Yes, and that was not his issue. His issue was accidents happen, but losing eternity can be avoided. Tragedies can be avoided. Sitting in a movie theater, getting shot down by some, by some, by some crazy person cannot be avoided. But losing eternity, hallelujah, can be avoided. Luke 13, verse 5, he says this, to that last incident. He says, I tell you nay, or no, except you repent, you shall also likewise perish. It wasn't because these folks were worse sinners than anyone else. He says, unless you repent, you too will perish. In other words, listen, don't waste your time trying to figure out if their deaths were in proportion to their sins. As horrible as my mother's death was, as horrible as the massacres and, and churches are, as horrible as things like this are, as horrible as it is, he's trying to tell us, don't you dare suppose that they were worse sinners than anyone else. But you need to decide something. You need, you, you need to decide where you are going after you die. Because that's the worst tragedy. Jesus says that is the worse than a bus full of children being blown up on their way to school. Worse than a, than, than, than a religious, holy, lovely person being gunned down innocently in the middle of a street. Worse than that. Listen to what he says in Matthew 10, 28. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both the soul 
in the body and health. So in closing, the bigger question is this. Since our bodies are temporary and we cannot predict tragedy, as wonderful as we are, as much as we go to church, as much as we love God, where is our soul going to spend eternity? Worse than being blown up by a car, worse than being gunned down in a movie theater, worse than being burned alive, worse than, than, than being, having a pastor killed in front of his church, which just happened down the road here. Losing your soul and spending eternity in hell is worse than any tragedy that could ever befall humanity. If that is you, if, if you're not sure where you will spend eternity, Jesus says that it is the worst tragedy, even if that house collapses on you tonight, where your soul is. So if you pray this prayer with me from your heart, I guarantee you, that you will be assured that you will spend eternity with Christ. Amen? So pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I give you my life. I give you my heart. I give you my dreams and I give you my hopes. Fill me with your Holy Spirit, I pray. Forgive me of all of my sins and turn the lights on, Lord Jesus, to your reality. I accept you in my life. I accept you in my, in my home and among my family and in my job. I accept you. Be Lord of my life. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for all your comments. Uh, stay tuned. We've got a lot more coming at you. May God bless you in Jesus' mighty and glorious name. Amen.